Years ago, when I just started web scraping, you could scrape almost every website with a combination of requests and beautiful soup. Now, if you do that today, you get blocked immediately, and that's why people started using libraries like Selenium and Playwright. Now, recently, I noticed that if you use Playwright on a very popular website, you also get Cloudflare after just a few requests. So today, I want to introduce you to a new Python library which is based on Playwright and which is going to help you to stay entirely below the radar so you can scrape every website. And before showing you this new library, which is going to make your life so much easier, I first would like to introduce you to Playwright. And that's because the new library is 100% compatible with Playwright. So let's get started. So the website that we're going to scrape today is indeed.com and we're going to scrape all the Python developer vacancies. So click on Python developer. Now you will see on the left side that we have a list here of all the Python developer uh, vacancies. And if you click on one of them, it will load the details in some kind of a frame. And in the script, we're going to build a deep scraper. So first of all, I'm going to fetch all these items. And then for every single one of them, I'm going to open a page. And if you right click here on the title, then click open link in new tab. The page will open in a new tab like this and you can get more details. But before we start with the actual scraping, um, in the description of this video you can find a link and this link will lead you to this website where you can find all the requirements and all the Python scripts that you will see in this video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to op open a new terminal and then copy the requirements for the first script, paste them here and as well take the second line and paste it here in the terminal and then press enter. Once you've done this, you're ready to start this web scraping project together with me. So as you can see, I have a function here called scrape indeed. Uh, I'm using the playwright object and here I'm creating the browser. And if you're using playwright, I would recommend to go with these settings because these settings are the best to keep you undetected. Then I'm creating a, a page. And then you see here while pages less than two. And this is where I'm gonna loop through the different pages. And if you want to scrape, let's say, uh, for example, 100 pages, you can just uh, change it like this and it will scrape the first 100 pages. I will see here that it goes to the page and then you see start uh, is page count multiplied by 10. And that's because if you navigate to the second page here, um, you will see here in the top and start is 10. And the next time it's and start is 20, etc., etc. So it keeps track of the page count with this argument right here. And in the script here, we get all the vacancies where the class is card outline. And if I click here, click on inspect element, and then you will see here the card outline uh, class. So this is how we separate all the different vacancies. And then for every vacancy, we're going to extract the title and the URL. So you see here that we extract the h2 and you will see here that we extract the a tag and we want to get the attribute href. And at the end, we append all of them to the list jobs. And we're going to loop through jobs right here for job in jobs. And this is where we're going to scrape the details page. And that's exactly this page. So from this page, we're going to also extract some elements. So you see here that we have a delay just to make sure we're not sending too many requests to the website at the same time. Then you see here that we um, take the title from the job element because we've already scraped it in the first page. Uh, we also get the URL and then we also create here company name, location and salary info. And those are these fields. So this is the company. You will see your inline header uh, company name, data test ID. And then you see here that I get the company name by um, navigating to page.getbytestid and then the element that you've seen earlier. And then I check here whether this element actually appears because if it doesn't appear, I'm going to get an error. And if that's the case, I'm going to fetch the inner text, so the text in this element. I do the same for company location and salary info. Then once I have extracted all the items, I append them to all items and I close the browser and I return all items. And then this is where I actually execute the function. I save the result in jobs and here I save jobs in jobs.xlsx. And on my screen, you see the result after running this script. Now, before showing you this new Python library, which is gonna make you like 100% invisible, I would like to introduce you to the future of web scraping. So in the first part of this video, you have seen how to web scrape with the traditional way by showing Playwright in which HTML element it can find specific content. The sponsor of today's video is AgentQL and they've created a method that allows you to fetch data from a website without knowing anything about HTML. And this method is based on a large language model. Let's see how this works. The website that we're going to scrape is this one. It's the Costco website and then the category candy. And the script that I'm using is this script. And before running to the script, let's first install the uh, necessary libraries. So the libraries that you need to install are agentql and also python-env. Press enter. 
So as you can see, I've created a function here and at the bottom of the script, I'm calling this function and as well saving all the output in an Excel file. And as you can see, this script is more or less the same as the previous script. I'm using pagination to navigate to all the different pages. I'm only going to scrape the first four pages. And in this section here, you see what makes uh, AgentQL really unique. Because if you use AgentQL, you don't have to define in which HTML element uh, all the data is. You just tell AgentQL, I want to get a list of all products and I want to fetch the title and the price. And of course, if you want to add more elements, you can also add more elements here. But this is the basic structure. And especially if you're scraping a website that often changes or you're not an expert in HTML, then I would really encourage you to use AgentQL because it's going to make your life way easier. Now, if you haven't tried AgentQL yet, there is a link in the description of this video. If you use this link, you get the first 1200 API requests entirely for free. And you can do that by navigating to their website, click on Get API Key, log in with GitHub, and click on Create a New API Key, then copy your API Key, navigate to the .env file, and then you can here put the AgentQL API Key, and your script will work out of the box. Now, let's run the script and let's see how AgentQL actually scrapes the Costco website. Let's take a look at the Excel file. And as you can see, it has scraped the titles of all the products and as well the price. So back to our initial use case where we wanted to scrape indeed with this script. Now, if you've already used this script, you might have already seen Cloudflare popping up. And that's because Playwright is one of the most popular Python libraries for web scraping, but it's not actually been made for web scraping. So when Playwright was created, they didn't actually configure it to put it in stealth mode. Now, if you want to scrape with Playwright and you want to actually stay under the radar, I would really encourage you to use this library called Patchwright. So Patchwright uses Playwright, but it has been configured in a way to keep you actually under the radar. So in order to install Patchwright, just pip it. So let's navigate back to VS Code, open a new terminal, copy the command, and let's also copy this one. Now it's actually quite easy to swap Playwright by Patchwright. Just copy this line and then put it at the top of your script. And now you're actually scraping with Patchwright instead of Playwright. And while scraping all these individual jobs, you've probably noticed that Cloudflare didn't pop up once. And that's why I really like this new library called Patchwright. I'm really curious to your scraping project. So let me know in the comments what you're scraping and whether AgentQL and Patchwright have been able to help you.